Welcome dear Thriver to Thriver TV from beautiful Cape Tribulation. Today I just want to wish you all a really happy and beautiful Thanksgiving and this is such a special time for our Thriver tribe in the US for you to be able to get together with your family and your friends and really share gorgeous gratitude. And that brings me to today's topic. I want to talk about toxic and authentic gratitude. But before I get started, I'd like to remind you if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do hit the notification bell and make sure that you share my material with other people who you believe that it can help. Because we really want to get the message out there that we can not just survive narcissistic abuse, but truly thrive after it. Okay, so let's start with the narcissist perspective of toxic gratitude. The narcissist really declares and grandstands that you should be grateful, that you should be grateful for anything they can put their finger on that they have done for you. Now, stuff that they've done for you, there could have well been an agenda connected to that, or, you know, maybe it's just something that is in the basic realm of a normal human uh, decent behavior. It's not such a big deal anyway. And they will say to you that I've done all of this amazing stuff. So how dare you point out or say anything about the atrocious, disgusting stuff. So it's kind of like living next door to somebody who's really lovely and he takes your garbage bins in for you each week, but he ends up shooting another neighbor or shooting his family. There is absolutely no excuse for atrocious behavior, but yet a narcissist will tell you that you should be grateful for all of the things that they have apparently done for you. And it's meant to just completely cancel out your values, your rights, your deservedness, and absolutely this is gaslighting. And also what it does is it trains you to be in a scarcity mentality of thinking, well, I have to accept breadcrumbs. I have to accept the bad with the good in order to try to get any sort of love, approval, security, and survival. And it means that we haven't healed up and grown up yet to know that we absolutely do deserve, not perfection, it doesn't exist, but we absolutely do deserve kindness, decency, consistency, and to be able to hold people accountable if they do atrocious things and not have to continue our life with them if they don't learn from their behavior and if they don't uh, genuinely be remorseful and atone. That's just common and, and fundamental foundations of any healthy relationship. And I promise you, when you become a thriver, no longer will you ever put up with shocking behavior to try to have your needs met. It, it just won't happen. Okay, so there's another, excuse me while I sweat, this is Cape Tribulation. It's very warm and humid here, which I love. Now, toxic behavior number two, toxic gratitude that I wanna look at. It's this new age, fluffy, positive, love and light, and we just gotta be positive, and we just gotta see the positive, and it's garbage. I really wanna be outspoken about this. And I'm really sick of seeing people behave like that because it's not real. And it's kind of interesting that even people in this community who have shed their trauma and really done the inner work and come out really uh, blossoming and blooming and, and feeling that beautiful life force and source energy flowing through them, they can be grandstanding in their righteousness. You should just be positive. You should just be positive. And maybe they've forgotten their journey of what it was to dig in, to lean inwards, to be able to detox that trauma, to make space for well-being, to work through our being, to be able to be like that. So if you find yourself doing this, I want you to just really be humble and realize that 
remember what it was like when you were stuck in your internal trauma. You couldn't just flick a switch. You weren't an appliance. You had to make space for the good stuff. Okay. So that's my second piece I wanted to talk about. And the third thing with uh, toxic gratitude that can happen is in law of attraction. And standard law of attraction, I'm definitely not a fan of. And this can also be faux gratitude, such as I'm grateful for my life partner. In other words, fake it till it make it, till I, I make it and I'm gonna pretend that this person is already present. I'm gonna set the table for two and I'm gonna be really grateful for him or her or, you know, people can take it to the end degree. degree. Or I'm really grateful for all of that money that I have when you don't have it. And you might have seen in social media that a lot of people are putting up posts about you'll be blessed with riches if you say amen and all this kind of stuff. And I find it interesting that the people who frequent those kind of posts and say amen don't have riches and I don't expect them to get riches because they're not living in the now where our power really is. It's not in the future. And what happens is if I'm grateful for my future, trying to manifest it into the now, there's a big gap between reality and your projection into the future, which isn't collapsing into the quantum time space of your power with source now. So a lot of these people end up being very devastated and disappointed and often sabotaging themselves in regard to getting love, in regard to getting money, in regard to getting whatever it is. So I actually see that as toxic gratitude. I don't see it as authentic gratitude. So what is authentic gratitude? And this is a bit of a quantum discussion. And this is something I never had a grasp on until I went quantum. But when I did go quantum, I really did start to embody, understand, live and reflect quantum gratitude. And it's really interesting. It's a dichotomy because it's so big, but yet it's so simple. And it's so big because it is the bigger picture and the bigger picture is very quantum it's about the interconnectedness of all things it's about how our beingness and the composition of that is connected to the field and source and life and others and the simplicity of it is is in the small things it's in the detail and interestingly, if we're doing toxic gratitude, we're focused on the stuff and the things that are separated from us, the big things that we're hoping to get our beingness from, but yet it's our beingness that creates things durably and for real in a way that is authentic. So authentic Gratitude is about a deeper understanding and accepting of our beingness, a connection to that beingness. And for myself, rather than trying to get the things outside of myself to be grateful for, I started to be grateful about the journey of my soul and my beingness which was very simple because what it was was about loading up whatever hurt with the inner work with quantum freedom healing and letting it go and bringing in the superconscious light of source which is my higher beingness which is the beingness that i actually want which is the calm, the peace, the wisdom, the solidness, the feeling of love and belonging and wholeness and connection to the entire field. And then the gratitude became like a magical journey of life in this, in seeing and knowing and embodying, it just comes online. It's just something that you start to live and know 
of seeing the interconnectedness between all things and knowing that when support came to me from the outside, it was a reflection of how I was supporting myself by doing that purging of what wasn't me, the ego, traumatic fear and pain of my 3D self, my small, human, egoic, logical, disconnected self that had accumulated so much personal pain of letting that go and bringing in the source self that was far more infinite, eternal, immortal and connected to the field in a quantum way, the simple things became so powerful. And I'll never forget one of the first times after I'd done a lot of shifts on myself and I walked into a bakery and about three people turned and smiled at me. And I remember that I was standing there and I dropped something and a man picked it up and he said, can I get this for you? And the lady looked me in the eyes and she said, hello, sweetheart, what would you like? And it went ping for me. And I knew the magic was because I've been tending to my inner being and making my journey about that releasing the fear and the pain and filling it with light and my true self that the outside had shifted instantaneously to show me the evidence of that. That's what I became grateful about. That's my authentic gratefulness. So rather than, you know, waking up traumatized and running off a list of I'm grateful for this and, I'm, you know, your gratitude list of a hundred things to try to save your vibration and pick it up and fix it. Again, that's an overlay and that can actually be a spiritual bypass. And that can be like we're trying to put ice cream on top of poop because the trauma is still there and the pain is still there and we're trying to manage and train ourselves out of it rather than actually shift and change our beingness to live in this wonder and this magic of the interconnectedness of all things. And I'm so grateful for that awareness now. I am grateful for when I get a trigger from the outside of something horrible that is actually showing me that I still have a matching belief or a trauma in there. And there was a situation, an event in my life just recently, which was a big trigger and a big trauma. And at first, absolutely, I spun into the human aspect of it. But then when I blessed and accepted, and I'm grateful for this, and this isn't happening to me, it's happening for me. What is this showing me? I was able to go inside, target the trauma, generating this, that was happening in my life and the trigger inside of me, load it up, release it and bring in my higher self and source and go up to an even freer level, being eternally grateful that this person in my life has brought forth this to me to help me heal something and rise above again, something that I never could have if this hadn't have happened. As Neil Donald Walsh famously said in one of his Conversation of God books, I only bring you angels. I only bring you angels. When we go quantum, this is the level of gratitude that you start living. And with this level of gratitude, it's completely unconditional. It's not conditional on anything happening. We're no longer dependent. We're no longer empty until we're fulfilled and filled and awake and aware and evolving no matter what. Could there be any greater gratitude than that? I hope I've been able to express in words what I hope that you can feel cellularly as a deep truth. Because sometimes it's hard to explain something that you can't touch, see, smell or feel. You can only know it when you start living that way. So if this has resonated with you, if this has helped you understand a deep meaning to life, 
then I'd love you to check out the link of this video, which is NARP, the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Program, which is exactly how I got to that level of gratitude and life force. And also too, I want you to have a look at what's coming up, a workshop that I'm going to be helping you these holidays. So not just, of course, what you're going through in Thanksgiving, but your holiday time to be able to turn them into the most beautiful time that you could ever imagine and start going corner with me in this incredible community. This could be your entry point to start learning what I've been talking about today. So check that out as well. And I just want to say to all of you, I am so grateful for you. I love you so much. I couldn't be doing what I'm doing and living the life that I'm having and the expansion that I experience if it wasn't for all of you in this co-creation with me. So, so much love to you. And until the next one, keep smiling, keep healing and keep thriving because there is nothing else to do. Lots of love. Bye-bye.